coming up in today's episode of Maelstrom of Lore. I'm going to ask each of you a question. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you don't lose a point, but anybody else can choose to steal. If they steal and get it wrong, they lose a point. And also... <laughs> I, okay, so I, I'll go ahead and I'll get it incorrect and say High Fleet Charon. Charon. C-H-A-R-O-N. You mean my made-up High Fleet? <laughs> oh, is that... <laughs> as well as... If you're expanding that table out, the bugs feel like the bugs at that scale almost. Pretty close to it, at least. This is the Maelstrom of Lore. Welcome, Wargamers, to Mini Lore Gaming, the segment where we play a game. We're going to play a game that Matt has prepared for us because Matt is the games master in this. In all of the segments where we play games, in fact. Everyone's on board. Steve's on board. This game is called Arcana Obscura. Thank you, sure. Right. All right, Matt. Perfect. What are we doing, Matt? It's trivia, but it's all related to Tyranids. Ooh. So basically, <laughs> for, the, for the first short segment, and maybe the only segment, depends on how long it takes, I'm going to ask each of you a question. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you don't lose a point, but anybody else can choose to steal. If they steal and get it wrong, they lose a point. So you're not at risk when you're asked the question directly. You're at only at risk if you choose to steal. And then if we have time, we'll do like a group one where the first person to answer the question Can gets we the try point. to steal before they go to answer? No. Okay. It's not fair. <laughs> so wait for, yeah. okay. But they but they are going to be on like a 10-second timer. I don't have a buzzer, so I'll just go, eh. <laughs> All right? <laughs> eh. Just like that. Same tone every time, too. Uh, okay. So remember, it's all related to Tyranids. So we're going we're gonna to pop the first question up on the screen there. This is going to be rough. Oh, unless it just failed because I had a comma. There we go. Let's, let's fix that again. Nice. Which high fleet, Luca, was known for its invasion of the Octaria sector, leading to a prolonged conflict with the orcs? That is obviously the behemoth uh, high fleet. That is incorrect. Would oh anybody like to deal? Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. <laughs> There's only a few to choose between. The shot in the dark. All right. Does somebody want to steal? I think I know. Steve, you want to try to steal? I I think I know too, but I don't want to say it. Are you going to officially steal it? No. Do you want to go into the negatives? Nobody's going to try to steal? Uh, Come on! Way too hard, man. Can I guess again to go into a negative? No. (laughs) Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll get it incorrect and say High Fleet Charon. Charon. C-H-A-R-O-N. You mean my made-up High Fleet? (laughs) Oh, is that... (laughs) Probably not that one, Josh. (laughs) No, there's there's the... There was an orc, the... Yeah, but that was an orc. The the arch... arch. That place... (laughs) The arch no. arsonist. Okay. Sorry, yeah, you lose a point. I will give you, I'll tell you what I think it was, but I'm not going to attempt to steal. So no point. If well, I hold on. Whoa, whoa, Dave, whoa, whoa, whoa. do you want to steal? No, no, I have no point. All right, Steve, what do you I, think it is? It was Kronos, right? No. Oh, then it's good thing Le- I didn't try. It's Leviathan. Gosh. All right. You, if in doubt, say Leviathan because it's the biggest <laughs> and it's everywhere. Okay, so score is uh, negative one for Josh. To Comment if you were right. Else. Did your high fleet never fight orcs? Uh, not in the Octaria sector. <laughs> But oh, yes, yeah, did. there was that whole narrative supplement <laughs> though. <laughs> We're zone off here. <laughs> yeah. That was like last edition. All right, Dave. I got to put a new question up on the screen. Give me two seconds. Watch it be something like, what color is a Tyranid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's... that's they're, they're what letter does that. Tyranid I start so. with? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even get it right if that was it. <laughs> Dave, what is the term used for human cults that worship and aid the Tyranids, often unknowingly? <laughs> No, 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 no. You can't. No, no, no. You can't make that face. It's obvious to you, but it's not obvious to me. Okay. What is what the term? cult? Okay, quiet. <laughs> Shut up, Luca. Wait, did, I, did I get something from Luca? Could I could be? No, I, I could, could get it wrong, right? What it, is it? Like, it feels like it's obvious to me, and it could be term? obvious, but really, it could be a trick. How do I know it's not a trick, Steve? Okay, you've got a few seconds left. What was the question? What is a term used for human cults that worship? Gene Steeler cults. That is correct. Ding ding. See now, in my in my mind, it was not certain. It, it was like I was taking Look a chance. His hands up. It does, it, that doesn't make it obvious. <laughs> no, that could be a trick. Okay. But thank you, Matt, for making it a very easy question. Thank it's you so like, much. That room, oh my gosh, it reminds me of another dress. It's like, you know, Brennan, it's like he's like obsessed with birds. <laughs> All right, Josh. Okay. Here's a tough one for you. Which Tyranid organism is responsible for creating new bioforms and adapting the Tyranid gene pool? Uh, oh, gosh. G- okay, yeah. Uh, the Norn Queen. That is correct. Oh, let me oh, go. Awesome. Ah, nice. Jeez, that's Louise, that's a point for that Josh. Did you know that? that I, I had kind of an idea. I didn't know if there was like newer lore with that. So Josh is that back to instant. zero. Josh is back to zero. <laughs> that was, that was, he got that instantly. Like that wasn't even hard. 
Well, now it's Dave is still in the lead. One nothing for everybody else. Wait, wait, um, I'm, I'm confused. Why didn't Josh get that? I thought he got it. He was that negative. negative one because I tried to steal one earlier. Oh, right, 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 all right. Okay, all right. Yep, enough. yep, yep. Sorry, I have to quickly remove commas because I forgot that in my programming. <laughs> so that's why I'm delaying putting up the question. Uh, Josh, what is the unusual... Wait. Yeah, it's not Josh. Not Josh. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Steve, sorry. <laughs> what is the unusual <laughs> phenomenon observed in the galaxy following the path of Tyranid High Fleets? <laughs> Characterized by a complete absence of psychic energy. That would be the shadow in the warp. That is correct. Very good. Starting off easy here, except for, <laughs> except for Luca. He was thinking noodles. I can't. I can't wait for my next question. <laughs> Are you ready for your next question? Yeah. Name the the, the guy who developed the idea of the Tyranids. <laughs> no, no. It's Luca. It's a much easier one. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. Which imperial operation was launched to assassinate a Norn queen, and where did it take place? <laughs> If you just get the name of the uh, uh made up made up EM three. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Dang Whoa. It. No. Anybody want to try to steal? I'll give two points if you get this right. <laughs> but you also get negative two. No, no, you only lose one. You fools made up EM two. <laughs> no clue. I have no. I'm not. No, no, no way. Operation Shadow Brink, obviously. Oh yeah. my uh, goodness! Should have known that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Oh, how, how, how do we not have to remember that? Is it Dave's turn next? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> well, that's the obvious order that we go in. <laughs> okay, hold on. I got to rewrite this one really quickly. It's okay. It, I mean, they feel like they're pretty, pretty good. They're not I, too I difficult. I feel like there's right? obvious bias against Luca. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dave. What is the color scheme of High Fleet Leviathan? Oh. No, no, no! Don't do that again. It, it feels it's free stealing, free stealing. <laughs> you can't free steal. No, I, 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 I put my hand up to pre steal first. That is your color scheme, right? That's that's the. You're not telling me. He's not telling me. Yes, yellow, and you know I should know the corn color, right? I should definitely know the red. This Wait, moment. no, see, no, no, you're not reacting right away. It makes me like second guess it. Is that correct? Think of uh no, you know what? She did it. Did the <laughs> Think noodles. <laughs> Think noodles. Think noodles. Wait, hold All on. Right, your time's almost up there. See, that, that's Dave. the sad thing about this. Okay, there's Oh wait, no, that's Kraken. Okay, so is it like purple and white? That is correct. That is correct. Okay, okay. All right, cuz I was confusing the red and the yellow from years ago when I first got into it. All right. Dave and takes everyone it. else is like, "No, nah, that's so obvious," but it wasn't. That Dave takes the lead. Josh how do Tyranids travel faster than light through space? Ooh, I actually know the answer. I have to think about this now. I actually there's more than one way you can answer this. That'd um, be correct. How do they travel faster than light through space? Because I I don't think they use the warp. I'm working through that in my mind right now. Uh yeah, no, I have I have no idea. They create they create wormholes somehow. All right, that is incorrect. Damn. Anybody want to steal? That's it. I don't even know. I, I feel like I want to say they don't. They don't travel faster than light? I'm not stealing. I don't think it's accurate. Because the it's not, is it a trick question? Maybe. Are you going to lock that in? Well, I was thinking that they, I, I was legitimately thinking that they don't, but then I, really, then I remembered like modern ish lore, Leviathan's coming around from both sides, which means you would have to go faster than light. Yeah. If you don't travel faster than light, yeah. you don't conquer the galaxy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, nobody gets it. So it, there's a combination of quite answers that you can give. So one is that they have specific ships called narvals, Ooh. and those things are responsible for creating kind of semi-warp conduits. Uh, when I say warp, I don't mean like the warp, but I mean like Star Trek warp drive. So what they do is they lock on to the gravity well of the system they're going towards, and they create a warp conduit. And that's how they go. So the very the first job that you ever put me on when you hired me 10 years ago was making a video about this exact ship. Right? I remember that. It, and it's pretty now. cool. Yeah, yeah. So they, as far as we know, they don't go through the warp. They, they just create like these gravity. It's like a warp drive kind of thing. Who would have, who would have known? Okay. Tier Who's next? Players. That would be. Tier new players would have known that. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually surprised. Like I'm a little disappointed. I didn't know that one. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 well, it's a tough one because throughout cool. the years, things get retconned about how yeah, things yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're a few more here. So who's up next? Steve, right? Steve. Yep. All right, Steve. Uh, which high fleet 
is known for its use of stealth and surprise tactics, differing from the usual Tyranid frontal assault strategy. I know the answer. I can Kronos. Kronos? Yes. That's what everybody's answer always is. That is incorrect. <clears throat> Anybody want to steal? It's the sneaky boys. I think it was like, I know. What, what was my score at? Zero? <laughs> Currently, the score is off? two for Dave, one for Steve, and zero for Josh and Luca. Can you list them off? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them anyway. I can't remember this. I can't. You know what? I'm not confident in this one. You're not going to steal? Nobody wants to steal just no. to get a free point? It's not free. Is it free? No. Oh, if you well. fail, you lose a point. Okay, we'll read it again one more time. Uh, which, which high fleet is known for its use of stealth and surprise tactics differing from the usual Tyranid frontal assault strategies? Yum, girl. Ooh. All right, Dave loses a point. <laughs> oh, I thought you were correct on that too, actually. I just uh, remembered the first Tyranid word I heard once upon a time. Mm -hmm. That was right. my logic. No, no it would be the that, planet that, that they found the... So nobody, yep. Nobody's going to... Uh, is nope. that not the... What was that sneaky fleet called? The That's Jormungander. The is, that your, is that you yeah, trying to answer? Jormungander. Yeah, it's my answer. So Jormungander's close, but that's not it. Dang it. Can you name them all off now that we... we all yeah, that, that's fair. Off the top of my head, okay. Uh, Behemoth, Kraken, Leviathan, Gorgon. or Yeah, Gorgon. Um, Kronos. Um, Jormunger. Jormunger, that's what they're called. And I think yeah. that's... That's all the major ones. It's not like... It's one of those. Okay. It's Kraken. Oh, it's Kraken? 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 Yeah. It's just like, it's only because it's a name I recognize. That's yeah. not because of any other They're the reason. melee ones in my head. They are. So, yeah, so yeah. they had a stratagem that basically, and it, nobody ever, I could never use it because it was super cool stratagem, that if you fought with something on the ground and in the sky at the same time, you got bonuses. So when you fought the same unit, like from multiple ways. So they're known for like, they'll attack up. The, mm -hmm. it, it, here's the thing though. Like any Tyranid High Fleet can use those strategies. It's just that you well, know, each of them kind of have their thing, yeah, yeah. and Kraken was known for that. So I said um, Kronos. That's the shooty one, right? Yes. So, the, so, Kro that's... so Kronos is the anti-Psyker, anti-Chaos oh, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, which obviously I'm not, not going to ask that question. <laughs> uh, Why not? <laughs> okay, well, here's an interesting one, and there's actually more than one correct answer to this. So who's next? Luca. Luca. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> that actually works. Luca, which Tyranid bioform is specialized in capturing and returning live specimens to the Hive Fleet for analysis? I want to say that it is Gene Stealers. That is incorrect. Dang. Live? Oh, it could be Lictors also. I'm not going to let you yeah. answer again. Fair. <laughs> it's one of the two. Anybody want to try to steal that one? There's more than one, but there's one pre predominant one. It's, to me, it's one of the scariest Tyranid bioforms. Bring them alive. When you when you when you read a story about them, it's just terrifying. Anyone? I want again. I, I think I know what it is. I'm gonna kick myself too for not answering. Getting a free point. Free point. Come on, yeah, Josh. For the, for the, free, the point. free point. Um, just step, just I'm, go I'm, for I'm it. trying to think if there's some because I think. Okay, so I'm gonna actually answer. Okay. I'm gonna butcher the name too because I think Forge World doesn't make it anymore. The Dimacaron. Uh. That is incorrect. Dang, that but I will, I will give you a clue that it is from Forge World. Oh, 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 it's the, uh, oh, I can't steal. All right, give us my question. Well, if Steve's not going to steal, you can go ahead and try to guess. I remember the name. Steal, I was going to guess something else would be wrong is with it a, the Forge World thing. There is, there's a non-Forge World one, too, that could be correct. All right, just just tell me, Luke, what do you think it is? I can't, actually, I can't remember the name. It's the uh, weird, big, floating brain kind of like bug. It's like not a malice, malanthrope? There you go. Malanthrope? Mal yeah, yeah. So, okay. We were trying to name a unit that whole time? <laughs> <laughs> the bioform. The bioform. You, you say know. it like it's obvious. Like, it, it's the bioform. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah of course. But, yeah. Obviously. It's a yeah. fancy word for unit. So, okay. So, there's a story. Like, if you read, like, the description of the Balanthrope, so basically it's like, after the fight is over and the Ripper Swarms typically come behind and consume everything, the Balanthrope, which just floats above the battlefield, will go through and pick up survivors and wrap its... Like it's mouthful of tendrils around their brains and do a quick sampling, and then it'll either go snap their snap their neck basically and drop them for the ripper swarms to eat, or it'll be like, mm, this is a good one, 
and float it and paralyze it and float it back. Yeah. The mount. <laughs> blah. Like, blah. Uh, the one terrifying. I said doesn't have some mechanic of like terrifying. absorbing people. Or the demon, the demon shoves it inside of its thorax and absorbs it to heal. Oh. So it takes you alive. It grabs you alive, shoves you inside of it, shuts down this like rib cage kind of thing, and then like slowly melts you. It's like a quick and, recycling of and, and they, yeah, so they, you're you're like trapped in there until it gets hurt, and then all of a sudden you'll feel like just suck the essence out of you and just. So you're you're but in the, in the meantime you're like in a cage, uh, and, until it gets hurt. If it doesn't get hurt, you'll be fine for a little while. But it and uses the, it. Yeah, it's pretty scary. That's the bugs. All right, well, let's let's finish off this round, and I think we've taken enough time with this. So who hasn't gone yet this round? Who, who, who did I just, first? So it's Dave next. So it's Dave then. Okay, so we got three more questions. Let's go through those really quick. <laughs> See your reaction, Luca. You're like, I, I'm, I'm so excited for your question. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get another easy one. <laughs> okay. Um. Shoot, hold on. Where was it? I got so many questions here. I'm trying to copy Matt, and paste the right one. If you ask it, I get it right away. Ask me another one. Okay. Or give me the point. Or give Steve the point. Okay, well, here's one for you, Dave. He said okay. He did say okay. How do the Tyranids typically begin their invasion of a planet? I pre steal. G sealers. That is a correct answer. Yeah, they send them down and then they. It's, I, I, actually, you know what? I think it's Gene Sealer cults, really. Yes. But okay, it, like so, they infiltrate society. So, so that is correct. And then they fight along Gene Sealers. So you said you got it fast, so I'm going to ask you a follow up question. Uh oh. So, what I actually meant. <laughs> Oh no! Was once a Tyranid hive is going to invade. So not like the Gene Sealer cults, which are the forerunners that try to find good planets to invade, because they're more like scouts. When a Tyranid hive fleet is first appearing in the system, what do they first do? What is the what is the beginning of their invasion of a planet? You've already got the point, so you're not going to lose a point if you get this wrong. Oh, okay, so the follow up one is uh, that uh, I mean. So so so, so you're you're correct in saying gene sealers because I didn't specify the question well enough. Mm. I should say once a high fleet arrives, committed. Once it's committed to a system, what's the first stage of its or not stage, but what's the first thing it does typically? So the first thing it does yeah. is infiltrate society with. Well, that, we already sealers. said that. We already said that. <laughs> After that. Oh, it's okay. So then after. So the gene sealers go way ahead and they find planets, then, and then they draw a high fleet towards them. So when the high fleet shows up in the system, what's the first thing it does? Typically. That's a hard, I don't know. Okay. So it's. Anybody like, want to answer that? Yeah. They spore it? Yes, that is correct, Luca. They. Spore mines? Is it spore mines? They did yeah. spore the Well, planet. kind of. Yeah. Kind of. It's not spore mines. They seed the planet with spores. Okay. And these spores then drift into the atmosphere. So you can actually see them like through the sky. And what they do is once they land, they tell all the plants and vegetation basically they go into a hyper growth so that it, the plant the planet is rich so pretty much every planet that you're fighting tyranids on is going to have like tons of plants growing up everywhere because the spores have forced them and that way they draw nutrients out of the soil so it's really easy to consume so but you are correct because i did not uh specify i meant when the high fleet first arrives not the gene sealers but gene sealers is a correct answer to that as well do you guys agree that that would be a correct answer considering? I, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would have said like a gene stealer. And That's what I would have said as well. Right That's what, okay. First, yeah. I don't want a freebie Matt no, yeah. thing. No, no. I, I, I just didn't. Like, I guess like, I think sometimes like they might, like an invasion of a planet would be like, there's nothing there to defend it to. They just go in to like spore it, to take everything and move along. They would still oh, spore it because yeah, they, they want, spore it, yeah. they, they're surface feeders. They don't want to have to dig down. And so by having the plants work really hard, the plants pull up all the nutrients from the soil. Yeah. And then they can just take that top layer of soil in the plants and then they can move on. And they don't have to drill down and then try to unlock all the oil reserves and stuff and spend their time. They, that's too much time. They, they strip a planet in like 100 days. It's crazy how fast they can do it without when there's, when there's nobody to yeah, stop no them. conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Josh, second to last question here, and then we'll get our final score. What is the name of the special gland that allows Tyranus to rapidly break down and consume biomass? <laughs> A W. Um, <laughs> um, um, special gland. It's got a very specific name. A gland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like all the different like upgrades you used to be able to take on them. Oh, good. That's not a bad or, idea. Um, but the only one that I can think of right now is the adrenal gland, which is not. You know what? Let gland. let me rephrase this question because I'm not sure if it's completely correct. Okay. And what the answer is. Um, oh, I, I did a bunch of research, but this one I was actually not quite sure of. And when I copied and pasted, I'm like, wait, let's not do this one. So I'm going to give you a different question. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you a different question. I want to make sure that any answers I give. And, I'm you know, people you can the comment. They, they disagree with my, my question and answers, and that's just fine. 
Um, shoot. So <laughs> we, got, we got two more and we'll be done. So I'm going to catch you, Steve. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> Steve's making faces. Ah! <laughs> I'll catch you, man. You, you, are, second, are you faster than my ADHD? The second you take your hand off. Ah, that- here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's okay. Here's an interesting one for you, Josh. Oh, okay. You ready? Shoot. It might. This. It's either going to be really easy or really hard. We'll I'm not out. actually sure. We'll find out. What galaxy-wide event in the Warhammer 40k, or what galaxy-wide thing or event in the Warhammer 40k universe is believed to have attracted the Tyranids to the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, you know this one. Oh, it's the, the Pharos. There's the, the Horus Heresy and the, the activation of the Pharos. That is correct. Yeah. That was a really cool Another part answer part. to that, yeah, which, that is. which could be acceptable, would be the Astronomicon as well. That's effectively what the Pharos is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's believed that like a moth to a flame, the Tyranid psychic presence, are they detected the bright light of the Astronomicon or the, the the Golden Throne and that drew them to the galaxy. It was like a shining beacon. So kind of like how they'll be drawn to a planet that has a gene slither cult on it that's really infested it. It's like as they're floating through the galaxies, they'll be like, ooh, there must be a lot of things to eat over there if they have that much of a psychic presence. I will say that was probably the coolest part of the Pharaoh's book and the Horus Heresy series because the whole had nothing to do with the Tyranids the entire book. There was like the Night Lords are fighting the Imperial Fist at Pharaoh's with what's that warsmith's name Dan- dantioch dantioch i think yeah, yeah. dantioch it's a great story there we get alexis pollux there the like the founder of the crimson fist and everything a lot of great characters and then they resolve the whole pharaohs thing and it's like this shining big massive explosion of light and then the the epilogue of the book is like a single page of this like, like an eye opens like an eye opens a... in dark space like far away yep. from the milky way and yeah. it just like they're already on a path somewhere and then it just describes the whole thing changing its path yeah, and that's it. So I'm not gonna get super deep into it either, but I think, and you might remember it. There, there's a scene in one of the Ravener books that, before the Pharaoh story had come out, there's a scene in one of the Ravener books that suggests that that I might can't be remember that, event. but I think you're. Yeah, it's always been hinted at yeah. that's the Astronomicon, but that that story cemented it in the lore. Because remember, they they might they probably didn't know when they're writing it, and so they, they you can, if I were somebody writing lore for a big game. I would totally put stuff out there and then I'd listen to all the fan theories and then I'd pick my favorite. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. Seriously. That's not a bad way of doing it. Okay. Steve, if you get this question right, you'll tie Dave. Sweet. At two points. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> Which high fleet was the first to invade the Milky Way and initiate contact with the Imperium of Man? Uh, Tyran? The, what's the no high idea. fleet? Uh, That's for, correct for the planet. I'm... <laughs> I, okay, so we need a 50 50 Leviathan or Kraken, so I'll just go with Leviathan. That is incorrect. Is it Kraken? I don't, I'm not going to answer that because somebody could steal. Josh or Luca, if you steal and get it, you'll tie with Steve for second place. I'm going to jump in and say Kraken. Isn't that what you just said? What did you say? The Leviathan. Okay. <laughs> I Either heard... way, I don't remember what he said, but I know it was wrong. Oh, dang. Kraken is also wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I will jump in and say Behemoth then. Behemoth is correct. Oh, we knew it was early. We actually talked about this earlier. Think about the starter set. From the, the Battle of McCrag. Before my it's, time. It's red and blue. That's Behemoth. Is that before your... That was... That yeah. was fifth, oh, that was before your yeah, time. That was fifth, is that Behemoth? Yeah. Six. Behemoth is, yeah. is, is, is red and blue. Is Behemoth? Yep. Yeah. No, that was, that was fourth, wasn't it? Was the Battle for McCrag was, is Behemoth. Oh, the, the was Dark Eldar. No. No, third, third was Dark Eldar. That was third, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the Behemoth versus nice. Ultramarines was like that big first invasion. And Behemoth was stopped at McCrag, I believe. Tyran was the so, first uh, planet that they were known on, which is why they're called Tyranids, because, you know. Tyranids. Tyranids. The Tyranids. Ah. My personal, like, well, now I want to know the answer to this. So when the Tyranids first got to the Milky Way, yes. how many fleets, like, so from the first sighting of the Behemoth to modern time, sorry, not even that, so when the Behemoth first got to Milky Way, how long until we saw more fleets? Uh, it was shortly after that Kraken arrived. So we don't, I don't know if I don't have the timelines in my head, but first off, Behemoth wasn't the first, technically. It was the first major one. There have been Tyranids in the galaxy for a lot longer. But like if we're talking about like actual real invasions, High Fleet Behemoth was first, then Kraken. And then they, they beat back both of those. And I thought, yay, we're doing really well until Leviathan showed up from under and just kind of. That's what it's called, and Leviathan. They all came from very different directions. Yeah, right? so so they're all coming from the east side. And now Leviathan came up from the from the bottom, and then more High Fleet showed up, like High Fleet Kronos, which was meant for going against 
the, the demons because demons were a problem for Tyranids because they're not food. They're just a waste of resources to fight demons. Necrons at least were on worlds. That... Never a waste to fight demons. <laughs> oh, they, they, they gain nothing. And demons hate fighting Tyranids. Because they don't get anything from it either. There's no blood to be spilled. There's no souls to be gained. There's there no skulls to be collected. There's no skulls there's to be no collected. There's, there's no. Yeah. They, they actually depict. There, there, there the are fight. no tyrannid skulls. They, there are, but they don't care about them because it's not the same. It's, if you kill a mindless creature, you don't get the same out of it. Very true. Very it's true. not honorable. Yeah. So nobody likes it. Nurgle can't modify them, and That's a shame. Slanesh can't seduce them. They like it's just the, the chaos hates fighting tyrannids, and tyrannids hate fighting chaos. But Kronos shows up. And I've also, noticed. And all of a sudden, High Fleet designed to take out Chaos. And so That's it's actually really pretty cool. cool. Anyways, yeah. I don't want to get too, too far. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Which one's designed forever. to take out Chaos? Which one? Kronos. Really? Yeah. yeah. They had a lot of like anti psychic like defense and. Uh... They have a stronger shadow in the warp presence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they shut down psychic and they're more ranged. So in the, in the game, they focus more on ranged in the older edition because it's supposed to tick off corn. <laughs> Because <laughs> they would be like, as they're coming out of their warp portals and stuff, they're just getting bombed, and they're just like, "Come on, we want to fight!" And it's like, "Nah," and just bomb them from a distance, and so it just drove them crazy. And it actually talked about how, even though there was like technically millions and billions of these organisms dying for the Tyranids, the corn demons found themselves phasing back out of the reality because corn was like, you, "You know, this is dudes. Come on, stop! Just this is a bunch of bugs. Who cares?" And corn so just it, it actually. Yeah, and they, and they actually phased it. There, there's these demon princes, like these four major demon princes. They're coming out, and they're killing stuff. And all of a sudden, they're like, why are we getting pulled back to the warp, guys? And it's because their gods are like, it's a useless fight. Get out of there. Who cares? If you win, you lose. If you lose, you lose. So just save your energy. Let's go somewhere else. And that's how the Tyranids beat them. It's just annoying them. Yeah. And so that's what Kronos does. In fact, Kronos does such a poor job of rejuvenating itself because it's fighting chaos that Leviathan has been known to consume a world and then leave it before it's fully consumed so chronos and then chronos would come and just eat the world that's pre-digested for them just to re- like that they're working together which so that's is, relatively new lore right that is that's like last edition, edition or the edition cool. before that lore anyway so the final score and we'll stop there we won't do the last thing because that took long enough dave is the winner with two points Boo. i mean he, steve and josh have one point each and luca has minus one i don't know what's going on luca that's okay. You need to learn the lore a little better. Yeah, I, got, I, I just had just bugs. I just got to work on it a little bit. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> oh, that's good. Hey, that that, that first question. I don't even know what was that first question. <laughs> I don't know. I well, may have actually, I mean, that one is not that much, I suppose. That, that book just came out last edition. Well, that's it. It sounded like a pretty easy question to me. Like, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Comment if you knew. What color are the purple and white Tyranids? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> literal box art. Literal box what, art Tyranids. What yeah. color is the box art compared to? What's this weird, obscure, like, I assume the, the Narval or whatever is like old BFG lore or yeah. something like. It is. Yeah, it is. probably old. Well, not quite. It's Here's years. what's the question from a game that's out of print 20 years ago. <laughs> what's this bird? It's a chicken. The best part was the... the the best part was the um was actually the prediction that you would react that way and so like it's it's the best thing ever yeah that was that was good so uh, i'd say that's a successful game i think we all won there yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) next segment now we're from our sponsor which is us. We're self-sponsoring this video because we're making a game, guys! And it's called Ravage Star, and these are some of the new minis you can get from it. This is an Amari, this is a Space Dwarf, and this is a massive mech. He's called Ambassador, and uh, he is not open for negotiations, just so you know. The Late Pledge is open, so you can actually order these if you haven't done so before and you missed your chance. There's a link in the description below. And this massively helps support us and the channel, and it's super exciting because we're writing the rules for it, and it's a tabletop miniature war game! That's it. This is what it is. This is where we're at. 16 years of doing this, and here we are. Now back to the next segment of Maelstrom of Lore. To the tabletop. In this segment, we'll be talking about how the Tyranids fare on the tabletop compared to how they are in the lore. So uh, that is the brain kind of settled in there for a moment. Like, I'm going to have to, like, defer to you guys here because when it comes to the tabletop and the rules, uh, it's been a while since I've played, especially against the Tyranid. So uh, how do how do they fare? Are they similar? 
Uh, and this one actually, let, let's let's just assume that Matt is the, the the resident expert on this, so he'll have the most robust answer. So why don't we uh, take turns on kind of what we think, and then let's have Matt kind of like validate it. Yes, that's pretty close, or and then uh, let him go last. So uh, you know what? Why don't we start with myself because I know the least. Um, so it's like I would assume that they are similar feeling because they are an alien hive mind where they fight as a swarm and there's synapses. And so when those are taken out, then they just kind of go mindless in a very general sense. That's my basic impression of them. So from there, we would need to fill in the gaps. So what, what do you guys think? Well, I should talk about specific units. That might be a kind of good yeah, jumping off I was, point. I was going to say I preferred their, like, I thought the older Synapse rules covered what they were trying to accomplish better in the older editions. They've been lacking since, but it's a step in the right direction with 10th edition, I'd say. Okay, yeah. so, okay, here's, here's, here's a specific question then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, specific question. Let's say the Termagant, the power of a Termagant, right? Like, uh, versus one Guardsman, for instance. Pretty it, similar. Is it a pretty similar, pretty close? Yeah. They get a pretty close feeling. Yeah. yeah. So like twenty of them then. It's there was terrifying. Yeah. Twenty of them should be terrifying. Absolutely. But like twenty yeah. guards, we could take twenty of them. I think it's pretty evenish. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, hold, it's on, a, hold, hold that thought, Matt. I know you're gonna you're gonna you. Oh, uh, well, I was yeah. gonna talk about something in general, not to Tiernan specifically. What what I was gonna say is simply that when you translate from game, which only has so many models, that's where you're just like, what are you representing? Is that one space brain, one space brain, or is it supposed to represent more, right? It's, I, would, I would say it's more so like the feeling of it, right? I, I would say yeah. like between the Astro Militarum and the Terranids, they do a, I think they do a pretty good job of like a one-to-one. -one, like you could see like if you're expanding that table out, the bugs feel like the bugs at that scale almost. Pretty close to it, at least in my mind. I have a lore question for Matt. Um, to help answer the question, I think. Modern Termigan. It's size compared to a modern human. So he's the new upscale size of both these things. The termagant's almost the size of a small horse. Is that accurate? Yes. They're oh, enormous. Yeah, they're so like one for one, like they should be stronger. Oh, and well, let me faster. put it this way. A ripper swarm is, it, he would come, it would come up to your hip. Okay, that's terrifying. Yeah, right? Whoa! They're not these they're little big, tiny yeah. bugs. They, when, I remember seeing a picture of a person and the ripper swarm was next to him. And that, by the way, is a ripper swarm that hasn't had any food yet. They get enormous once they, they're, they're designed. They're basically just one stomach and a mouth. Damn. <laughs> and they're designed to consume and just get fat. And once they get fat enough, that's when they wobble back to the, the, the reclamation pools and they just hop in. So hold on, hold on. So like a ripper swarm, which is depicted in what, like four on a base? This three or four three on a base. So what, you're yeah. Yeah, is, four actually. what you're saying is one is the size of half a human. Yeah. Yeah. That's even, that's yeah, way imagine more Imagine a swarm terrible. of them. Yeah, that, that's way more terrifying. Yeah. So yeah. termagant to a man, um, the termagant should be stronger, faster, and better armed than uh, a regular man. Than a regular man. So yep. one for one, it's not a fair fight. The termagant wins every time. They're not this little gribbly thing that we all kind of think them regularly. The uh, the masses on the table, but like terrifying beasts. Yeah, to a yeah. space marine, of course, they won't oh, stand a chance. Now, Josh, Josh. Yeah. Okay, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the whole? <clears throat> well, it, it feels about right because I I think of when I'm looking at a game. And as there's more and more models on the table, sometimes it throws me a little bit off when stuff's packed so tightly together, but it looks right for the Tyranids. Yeah. Because that should just be a yeah. carpet of organisms just moving across the battlefield. There shouldn't be a whole lot of tactical spacing or kind of any other consideration or thought there. So, yeah, that, the, seeing them on the table, especially when you're playing like a proper, like, swarm kind of horde less feels about right for me. Yeah. Okay, Matt. So wh what's the what's the feeling? So for me, the, the big limitation of having the actual game is the size of the models. So when you're playing at a 28 millimeter or a 32 millimeter scale, you're playing in such a small location. This is why I actually, I, I don't, when I say I like eight millimeter games, I don't actually play hardly any of them, but I like the concept of them because I love terrain more than the models because you could more accurately represent. So a good example would be the Carnifex. So the Carnifex is a very old kit. I think it hasn't changed in the past 15 to 20 years. And when you look at it in any pictures or videos, this thing is enormous. It's just enormous. And yet on the table, it's about the size like this compared to a space marine or a man. And of course, that's big. But we're talking like it should be 
the size of the larger guys, like the Tranifexes, that would be an accurate size to Carnifex. That's true. And the animations, they are massive, they're massive, way bigger than how they're depicted on the tabletop. Right. And so now they've just been relegated to like a smaller or mid-sized monster, like a Dreadnought kind of thing, which is would not accurate the, to the lore. Would you say the Screamer Killer is appropriately the sized? The Screamer Killer is more appropriately sized for one of them. And, but now the technology's changed. 15 to 20 years ago, they couldn't do big kits yeah. like that. So they, they had to change that. So I'd say scale is one of the things. What's um, a scream? What's a screamer killer? The screamer killer is the it's 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 the original Carnifex, which was a tiny little metal model, and it had the four. Oh arms. yeah, we have yeah yeah we have and, one. I have one on the shelf. Right, and now yeah. they came out with the new one, which is enormous. Which thank is you, Luke. By the size. way, I just shout out to Luke. He, he gave it to he gave it to me at uh, actually no thank you Nick because he gave it to Nick and yeah. then Nick gave it to me because and I because I told him not to he yeah said, no, a, I don't want this Nick please don't and he insisted. It's a classic model, which they've redone into the proper size of the Screamer Killer. If you watch the animation for 40K 10th edition, you see the Screamer Killer in action. It picks up a space marine, lifts it off the ground several feet, and then just screens into its face with all the bioplasma. It's awesome. It's awesome. So so size, I would say, is a consideration that you're not going to be able to depict that on the table at 32 millimeter scale properly. Uh, it's the regular dudes, yeah, but not the bigger ones. So that's one of the things that kind of yeah. doesn't translate. Yeah, these Carnifexes are old. If they had all new kits, I'm sure they could do justice. I hope they do. Yeah, well, they got the Screamer Killer. Yeah. You could assume the rest would be that big, too. Ish. They would be. Yeah. Would be. But, and appropriately points costed and rules and all yeah, that stuff, Yeah, yeah, all that, too, yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of Maelstrom of Lore. You help to support the show by becoming a Vault member. And when you purchase things on the Mini Wargaming Forge, you get 20% off if you're a Vault member. So there's an added benefit to that. Thank you very much, guys, for all of your support. And let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Leave it in the comments below. Thank you very much and happy wargaming. Deep dive with us as we present segments such as Noob Hammer, if you're brand new to the Warhammer universe. Explain it to me in 30 seconds, like I've never heard of it before ever, that I can actually understand it after 30 seconds. I'm just a normal dude in a gaming store. Oh, what's that? And Lorehammer, where we theorize the fate of the numerous factions within the 40K universe. Lorehammer is more about us coming up with our own ideas too, right? Yes. Yeah. We gotta, we, when we answer the question, who's their biggest enemy? That's our opinion. True. But I would hands down say it's Tyrannus. Oh, I would agree. It's the So why? Yeah. We also have fun playing games. It's fun! It's fun! Yeah! Put it up! Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, okay. We, we, did, we did shuffle. No. We did not, no. <laughs> did not shuffle. Is it work again? Yes. yes! Yes! And occasionally compare other IPs against Warhammer in epic galactic showdowns. But, I mean, if you can deflect a blaster around, which is like, should be traveling closer to the speed of light, even though I know it doesn't do that in the film, then you can, you can, you can put your lightsaber up in time to hit the bolt around. Okay, so... Thanks again for tuning in, folks. I'm Mini Wargamer Dave, and you're in the maelstrom of lore.